Over its 31-year-old history, Disneyland Paris has said goodbye to countless attractions, from rides that were replaced by a new one to attractions that weren't efficient enough to maintain and stay dormant in the parks today. Some weeks ago, the first part of this video came out, where I talked about attractions such as the River Row keelboats that remain unused in the park, the Indian canoes, the pirouettes of the old mill over in Fantasyland, and Le Visionarium that was closed down and replaced by Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast, the last attraction to be installed in the Disneyland Park almost 20 years ago. Today, let's explore even more attractions and their remnants that you can still find and explore during our next day in the Disneyland Paris parks. Oh boy! Before we begin, if you enjoy my content and this video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as I upload weekly videos on theme parks from the past to the future. If you want to go the extra mile, consider becoming a channel member. You can find me over at Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, and in our Discord community. Links are in the description. That said, let's dig in. Let's start by going into the Disneyland Park and after making our way through Main Street, turn right into Discoveryland. At the back of the land, you will find the Discoveryland Theater. First fun fact of the day, when it opened, this theater was actually known as Cinemagique, a name most famous because of the show that would later open with a second gate Walt Disney Studios Park a decade later. Well, inside, you can currently experience the Mickey's Filar Magic 4D show, but the theater has hosted a number of different shows over the years. When it opened, it featured Michael Jackson's Captain EO, a 17-minute 3D film directed by George Lucas, where Jackson performed as the main character. In 1998, the name and theater suffered changes with new effects being installed for the new show that the venue would hold, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. This new show stayed there for several years until the death of Michael, when Disney parks around the world played Captain EO as a tribute to the star in 2010. After some time, Captain EO was replaced by temporary viewings and previews of new Disney movies and other events such as Star Wars Path of the Jedi. It wouldn't be until 2018 that Mickey's Philhar Magic would open here. Well, now that you know all that, where are the remnants? I'm glad you ask. In the pre-show area where we stayed before going into the actual theater, if you pay close attention to the overhead screens, you might just see Captain EO's logo burned into the LCD. This is really quite funny and not intentional at all, but it clearly stayed there because of all the time it was displayed. That's not all. Inside, the screen and surrounding theming clearly does not belong with Philhar Magic, and that's because it wasn't originally supposed to. There's one more remnant of days gone by. When you leave the theater after the movie plays, look to your right as you exit the building, and you'll see this wall decorated with birds and a quote saying, taking imagination further. This was installed with the upgrades for Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, because that film was produced for the Imagination Institute Pavilion in Epcot, and when brought to Paris, some elements also made their way across the Atlantic. That's all for the Discoveryland Theater. Let's now move on to Space Mountain, or as it's now unfortunately called, Star Wars Hyperspace Mountain Rebel Mission. Yeah, a mouthful. Well, here you need to look very closely to see the remnants of the old attraction it replaced. You see, this was once themed to a steampunk mountain based on the story of Jules Verne, where they would shoot you to the moon via a cannon. Yeah, I'm kidding, you obviously don't need to look closely at all, because it's all still there, waiting for the day the moon returns. Disney, just bring back the moon. Well, uh, I do really have something to show you here, because you see, back when Space Mountain opened in 1995, there were two attractions inside the dome, and one of them was a walkthrough attraction. I'm not talking about the mysteries of the Nautilus, but one that has been long forgotten by many. The Stellar Way was a simple yet amazing corridor that went alongside a part of the indoor queue and had big windows and open areas that would let you see into the mountain with all its effects, sounds, music, 
theming and trains making their way in space. You can still see the entrance and what I believe to be the exit of this long gone walkthrough as you go in what's now the premier access touch point, explore the inside of the mountain and leave through here just by Rocket Cafe. The stellar way was an idea that came from the original concept of Discovery Mountain because originally it was going to be a massive pavilion with many rides. I'm doing a video on it soon so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one when it comes out. For the next one, let's hop into the other park, Walt Disney Studios, avoid looking at all the construction walls, I already went over all that construction in last week's video, if you want to learn more, and turn a left to reach Studio Theater. This was a location of one of the opening day attractions slash shows here in the Studios Park, and one of my personal favorite Disney shows of all time, Cinemagic. I made a complete video on it, and it is, to this day, one of my favorite videos from the channel. Cinemagic paid tribute to the history of cinema, and was filled with state-of-the-art special effects and a spectacular 25-minute film. Safe to say that it was the anchor of the park, but one that didn't call out to many people because it wasn't a ride. Because Studio 3 aka Studio Theater was built for Cinemagic, the waiting area had several posters that you can see here, in a film reel. Well, when that show played for the last time in 2017, the posters were removed and the film reel painted over, but there remains the holes that belonged to that same reel. Inside, the stage is quite strange because it's just a rectangle opening on the wall with nothing around it. Well, this used to be the screen, and while Disney released this concept art showing a more detailed theater, it seems they forgot about it. Either way, next time you're waiting to watch together a Pixar musical adventure and notice those seemingly random holes, you now know why they're there and what used to play in the theater. Let's hop into Disneyland Park once again and walk all the way back to the other side of Frontierland, pass by Cowboy Cookout, and just before reaching the Euro Disneyland Railroad Frontierland Station, turn right. Here, you will find this weird and now empty area, with some small buildings and a shop that opens when the Frontierland Theater shows happen. This was once an attraction. Believe it or not, the Critter Coral was a location filled with animals, from small ones like rabbits and chickens, to bigger ones like goats, horses, donkeys and cows. When the park first opened, this petting zoo was open and the animals roamed somewhat freely around this open area, but French laws required Disney to build enclosures. This whole area literally brought the Frontierland story to life and was an amazing place for smaller ones to interact with animals. Creator Coral wasn't open year-long and after the 2006 winter season, the animals did not return, and the area was transformed into a meet and greet location themed to Woody from Toy Story. Some years passed, and that location closed, and to this day, it's only used for special events, parties, or seasons. The idea hasn't completely died off, though, because just the other day, when I was riding and exiting the railroad, I got a rare glimpse at a few ponies resting there and a conductor giving them some very much appreciated greeneries. For our last attraction, we stay right here in Frontierland because we need to talk about the Mark Twain Steamboat. When Euro Disney first opened in 1992, the Rivers of the Far West was a lot more populated by all kinds of different boats, from the smaller Indian canoes and river row keelboats we explored in the last video, to the bigger Molly Brown and Mark Twain steamboats. The second one was directly based off and pretty much a replica of Disneyland's boat with the same name, and a third one can be found in Westerland at Tokyo Disneyland. The riverboat landing would have these two boats carrying guests around the islands in the middle of the rivers for several years. During slower seasons, only one of them would run, while the other stayed parked in the dry dock. In 2005, the Molly Brown's engine overheated, causing a small fire. 
The Mark 20 became the only boat running in those waters for some time until a rather quick fix was made and both roamed once again. It was until 2010 that the Molly Brown left for a complete makeover as both boats were becoming quite old. A year later she returns in all her glory and the Mark Twain was left in a dry dock waiting for its own makeover. A year passed and then one more and then six more. It wasn't until 2019 that Daniel Decourt, the vice president of Disneyland Paris operations, mentioned the Mark Twain and announced its rehabilitation with a reopening to be held in 2021. It's fair to say that that did not happen. To this day, the Mark Twain remains in the dry dock, closed in, and you can still see it, either on the Molly Brown, around the Frontierland Depot area, or in the railroad. There were a couple of times that guests could see the boat and the extremely sorry state it's in. Hopefully one day Daniel's promises come through and we can see both boats paddling around. There's one other reference to the second steamboat and that's inside the Molly Brown as you can find a very special model of the Mark Twain. I won't tell you exactly where so you'll just have to explore this awesome vessel and find it for yourself. Well everyone that's it for today's video. Did you know about all these remnants of defunct attractions in Disneyland Paris? Which one's your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments. And now, as always, thank you for watching and that's a wrap.